So this is going to be pretty awesome. This is my first VR, and in fact, my first proper build guide that I've done in a very long time. And I hope you guys do stick around and enjoy it, because we're going to be showing you how to build this PC, how to set up the HTC Vive, and just playing around with bits and pieces as well. Now this system is actually all, all the parts that I picked up here from Overclockers UK yesterday. Um, this isn't a sponsored build or anything, this is a build that I'm doing for a friend. Uh, so these are all his parts, this is something that he bought and um, just basically I have the opportunity to uh, you know build it, set it up, play with it and uh, do a few awesome videos with it. So uh, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Other thing to mention though is that I actually now have two Gigabyte GTX 1080 Extreme Gaming cards in the house um, for the project, uh, project table as you'll have seen yesterday. Um, so I think it's really kind of irresponsible of me not to uh, do a video next Saturday showing off what those two cards do and assist them together. Other than that, uh, yeah, this is uh, kind of a really interesting thing, but Overclockers uh, UK let me pick up all the parts from the warehouse. This isn't something they do uh, at all. In fact, I think I'm possibly the only Overclockers UK non-staff member, uh, a non-Overclockers UK staff member to have ever picked a system from a warehouse, but I did get to do it. So without, uh, you know, going through a full list of parts, here's the, uh, well, picking from the warehouse. So possibly most important in the entire build is the Gigabyte GTX 1080 Extreme Gaming Card. Very awesome and definitely useful. We also picked up an, an Intel i7-6700K and a Gigabyte Z170X Gaming 7 board. We also picked up an HTC Vive and there was a very nice and admittedly quite tempting uh, pack of them or stack of them here so that was pretty awesome. We also needed some RAM, so we picked up 16 gigs of Kingston HyperX Savage uh, DDR4 RAM and a Seagate 3 terabyte Barracuda drive as well as a Samsung SM951 SSD. We also picked up a Corsair RM650X power supply and an H100i V2, then chucked it on the rack for the awesome uh, warehouse guys to pack it all up. We also grabbed a forklift so that we could get down the 400C case, but um, yeah, I did uh, kind of back away slowly, especially when I hit it on the corner, but uh, luckily we did manage to get everything down fine uh, with no injury or uh, issues, so that's awesome. So to give you a rundown on the parts, just in case we missed anything uh, filming in the warehouse, obviously we've got the HTC Vive, an LG 27UD68P monitor, 4K IPS loveliness, um, Corsair Carbide 400C and an RM650X power supply, as well as an H100i V2. We've got a Gigabyte uh, Z170X Gaming 7 board and a Gigabyte Extreme Gaming GTX 1080. Uh, we also have uh, an Intel 6700K, uh, Samsung SM951 S uh, 512 gig SSD and a 3 terabyte uh, Seagate Barracuda drive and I think if I'm not forgetting anything that's just about oh yeah 16 gigs of Kingston Savage uh, DDR4 RAM so as uh, I think that's pretty much it um, in terms of peripherals he already has some already so uh, he'll just be using those ones but uh, yeah this is uh, the awesome build uh, now obviously we're going to start with uh, the case and actually building it together and then you'll see the uh, Vive and monitor a little bit later but um, yeah, let's get on with uh, building into the case and uh, that sort of stuff. So I've got everything laid out here, just to uh, give you an idea of the tools that you'll need to build the PC. As you can see, I have a knife over there. Um, it's very just for opening boxes and stuff like that. Uh, a pair of scissors will do you just fine. And a single Phillips head screwdriver is really all you need. I personally have a little multi-tool one is better for smaller spaces and um, especially like motherboard screws and stuff but also have a bigger one for you know bigger screws and that sort of thing and that one's generally nicer to hold in hand and also have a flat head just for opening things a little bit easier and um, that sort of stuff but otherwise that's pretty much it you don't need any advanced tools you don't need a soldering iron or anything um, you don't need a voltmeter or anything like that so it's a, it's a very simple process um, as I said I've laid everything out so first thing we're going to do is install the CPU then the RAM the SSD and then probably um, put the power supply in the case and that sort of stuff and uh, go from there. For anyone who's built a PC before this will be very simple for you obviously you're just looking to uh, line up the little corner so if you can't see it on this uh, CPU cover here which will pop itself off later don't remove it before you install the chip you can also see that triangle here you can also see the triangle on the corner of the CPU so when you do take it out uh, obviously be aware that you don't want to touch the back and not necessarily you don't necessarily want to touch the top either but especially don't touch anything around here now, as I said line up the gold triangle Triangle with the triangle on the motherboard and it's normally on the socket just line it up and then once it's you know, nicely lined up it will drop itself in it doesn't need any pressure pushing down on it and then you just drop the cover over push make sure this is latching on push the arm down and the CPU cover will probably make a disconcerting noise as it pops itself off and that's the CPU nice and installed for you 
Now you can check your motherboard manual which one it recommends to fill in. Obviously we've only got two sticks of RAM so we're only going to be filling two of these sticks. But just to make a note, because this is a dual channel motherboard, it means that the two black slots will be running uh, effectively parallel so that you get effectively double the speed and that sort of stuff. Um, and the red slots will be running together as well which is why it's dual channel, you have two per channel. Now to do this, oh yeah, with this motherboard you only have to do one side, open these clips on there. Um, some motherboards you do have to do both sides but don't worry about it too much. And also the other big thing to watch out for is the notch in the RAM, so this determines uh, mostly what type of RAM you have but uh, you just line it up, make sure that the notch is in the right place, so in this case it isn't, so you're going to want to turn it back around and then go for uh, pushing it down. Now once it's lined up and in both sides, which can be a little bit tricky one-handed while filming, um, push both sides down evenly and it should click into place and this one especially should lock down. Do the same thing with the other one and uh, there you go, you've pretty much installed your RAM. Now, an M.2 SSD like this SM951 uh, drive you might not have come across in the past. There's several different types of connectors and you do need to make sure that the, uh, the connector and the uh, drive that you buy will fit in the board that you're buying, but generally speaking, it's fairly simple. All you have to do is unscrew the, the uh, well, screw that should come in the motherboard. If it doesn't, uh, you'll have to check with your motherboard uh, manual and all that sort of stuff. Um, but it's very similar to Sodium RAM if you've ever installed that. You put it in at a slight angle, have it sort of sit up slightly, get your screw ready, push it down so that it's aligned with the hole and then just screw it in. And that's pretty much it. It's possibly one of the simplest components uh, to install in a motherboard. So a little bit of case preparation. First of all, as you know, there's a uh, magnetic dust filter in the top as well as the power buttons and all that sort of stuff. And with this case, you can actually take the door completely off as well as the rear side panel, which has captive thumb screws, which is actually really nice and makes for a very easy clean building experience. Some of the ones with the sort of slide out doors, you can't actually take them off. So that's quite a nice feature. Now on the back here, you do you will find the box of accessories in the hard drive cage, and I actually ended up removing that triple two and a half inch SSD cage just for space and sort of uh, you know ease of use and ease of cable management. Um, and speaking of cable management, I actually removed the uh, cables from inside the case and untied them so that I can uh, just have them very easy to install later. And then I installed the I/O shield, which is basically just a little plate that you put in the back and make sure it's the right way around, and then just push all four corners in. It's very simple. So in terms of installing the power supply cables, obviously we've got the RM6. 650X so it is uh, fully modular so you will need to pick the right cables that you need so for example I have a single uh, well a triple SATA cable uh, that connects to the power supply on the back I uh, also have the 8 pin CPU the 24 pin CPU and the two 6 plus 8 pin uh, 6 plus 2 pins or a uh, graphics card PCI power connectors that are going to come up through the basement. So uh, we're normally you would normally install the motherboard first but in this case I just want to install the hard drive so that it's nice ready and already in there uh, and I can start sort of cable managing nice and easy. Now the connectors that you're going to need are obviously these gold things here and um, so we're going to install it this way out with the connectors facing back. And as you can see it is a little bit of a mess back here but we will start cable managing once we have the uh, rest of the system in. To put the hard drive in, these are toolless trays, so you just line up the holes on one side and then bend the clips over on the other side and that's pretty much it. And you're sorted and then you just plug in the power connector from the power supply and your SAS cable, which in this case is shiny and white. I've installed the motherboard at a slight angle and it's basically just hanging off of the central standoff. Now depending on which case you have, the uh, case may come with all of the uh, standoffs pre-installed or they may come in the uh, a little bag like that sort of thing. Uh, but basically you just install nine standoffs or nine screws. So obviously you're going to go for the central one um, first as that's kind of the one that holds everything up quite nicely. And then just install the rest obviously as you go around three top, three in the middle and three at the bottom. As you can see, I've installed all of the cables. It's very simple, it's very much plug and play. So the large 24 pin goes in the 24 pin connector, the eight pin goes in the eight pin. Um, I've actually routed the front power cables uh, through the bottom here as there's no hole that's normally kind of here or just under them, but uh, check the motherboard manual for where they go in. And also this motherboard specifically has a little easy connect thing so you can connect them all outside of the case and then just plug, it, plug the entire sort of block in there the right way around 
uh, and that all works. So it's actually a very simple process. Um, also, don't forget the audio connector down the bottom. In this case, it was a little bit of a pain. Um, and I've also done a tiny bit of cable management, although once everything is fully installed, and especially the CPU cooler, I'll be doing a bit more with the cable ties that come included with the case and the power supply. And I'll show you that in just a second. Next up is the CPU cooler. Now, as you can see, it does actually have thermal paste pre-applied to it. So the first thing we're going to do, uh, which we could do out of the, uh, out of the case, but because the case has a nice big cutter in the back, we're going to put this back plate on with this, uh, the four screws that come with it. Uh, so all you literally do is align the holes in the back and screw it in. The next thing just for ease is we're going to attach the fans to the radiator outside of the case so that when we go to put the radiator in that's already uh, done and sorted. The other thing we're going to do is take off the magnetic dust filter so that that's out of the way and we can screw straight into the top. Alright, so I'm going to be mounting mine on top with the tubes coming down this side. Just personal preference and what fits in this case the best. Um, and I can use uh, these little washers as well to make the uh, experience just that little bit better. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be screwing these in. This is actually in a pool configuration because of the dust filter on the top so that it makes some use. Uh, and you can just take these screws off the top, clean it off and then put it back in. Um, as opposed to having to try and take the fans off from inside and that sort of stuff. So hopefully that's a little bit easier. Just plugged in the four pin fan connectors from the wire that comes off of the pump block uh, and I've also plugged in the three pin to the motherboard header. On this motherboard it's the white one at the top um, but fairly simple just again check your motherboard manual to see which one is the CPU uh, fan header, the main one. Um, so the next thing is we're actually going to install this onto the CPU so we just take off the protest uh, protective cap. Obviously we've got the perfect amount of perfectly spread thermal paste um, so we're just going to very gently bend this on and then put the uh, four retaining nuts on top. Right, so now the CPU cooler is installed, we're going to be installing the rather beastly graphics card. Now this one is obviously a dual, in fact actually technically it's triple slot, so that's going to be an interesting one if I do decide to try the SLI out. But the main thing is that we're going to be putting it in this top X16 slot, which means that we're going to need this one and this one out of the back. So if you remove those probably prior to installation of the graphics card, that would be quite useful. And then once you do, all you have to do is slot it in, I'll show you in just a second. So once the covers are out, you can take the graphics card and as I said, line it up with the slot. There's a small locking pin in the back, so make sure that this little locking foot is placed down. Then all you have to do is just line it up and push it in. Then the two screws that you took out for the blanking plates at the back just go back into exactly where they were to support the graphics card. And then plug in the power and you're all sorted. So as I said, that's pretty much it. The last thing you need to do is just plug in the power supply. So I've got the two six plus two pin connectors here, so they just fold up and in. So there you go, that's pretty much the PC built. I'm going to do a little bit of cable management that will just have the cameras rolling for us so that you can uh, get an idea of what to do, but it's basically just zip tying uh, the cables down so that they're not bulging out in the back. But otherwise, that's pretty much it, really. I mean, the, as you can see, the graphics card does sag a little bit, so you might, if you uh, do plan on picking, for example, this one up, you might want to look at getting one of the supports. For example, Cool Master does one that allows you to basically just do that sort of thing and hold the back of the card up. But other than that, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Five is something that not actually a lot of people will be able to, you know, afford and that sort of stuff. I thought I'd give you a little bit of a sort of show around. First thing I want to mention is the awesome foam in here. It's soft cell, but um, and it's just very nice. It's almost like uh, audio foam, which is awesome. You have your rather large quick start guide that we'll obviously be going through, and your two lighthouse boxes as well, so that they, uh, you know, you can actually have some tracking. On the back, they have a uh, tripod jack as well as on the bottom, and they also have a 3.5 inch sink 
sync jack as well as a USB port, um, I believe sync button and a, a DC in. Underneath them you have two power uh, adapters for both of them as well as the mounting hardware that you might need to uh, attach them to your walls and the very very long sync cable which is basically just a double ended uh, sort of audio jack. Um, we have the controllers here which I'll show you in a little bit more detail later but basically they are this sort of shape and have some triggers on the back. Some sort of rumbly buttons on the side and obviously the touch pads that allow you to uh, you know do usual touch paddy stuff but also click them as well. Underneath the touch uh, the controllers you have the chargers and the cables for them that's pretty much it under there uh, and then you have the sort of main accessories box so you have the little breakout box that changes your DC in from the power supply and that sort of thing to the actual Vive itself uh, as well as a little sort of suction cup um, type sticky adhesive that can go on the bottom so if you want to stick this to your desk so this doesn't go anywhere you can do that. You also have the power supply for the Vive itself, a little HDMI cable as well as the headphone that comes with, these are the little in-ear ones um, and uh, an extra sort of eye cover piece in case yours gets gross and nasty uh, and then a few uh, sort of microfiber cloths to clean out the screen and all that sort of stuff and then there's uh, some more documentation inside. Finally, the kind of main event here is the headset itself. It comes with obviously the very long wire loom, um, which has USB, um, HDMI, and the power connector, and then obviously the three and a quarter inch, uh, three and a half inch jack um, is just a short little cable there. And the headset itself, which already has one of the sort of padded foam elements, and obviously all of these sort of tracking dimples. You'd also have a button on the side and a focal adjustment knob uh, on the bottom so that you can change where the eyes are, and obviously the tracking camera on the front. Setting up the Vive is actually really, really simple. The first thing you're going to do is plug in the two lighthouse boxes. Now, do bear in mind that this entire setup requires somewhere between, I think, three and five plugs, depending on if you're charging both of the controllers at the same time with the included uh, USB plugs. But basically, you plug in the lighthouse boxes that I would actually recommend you attach to your walls properly with the screws and plugs that come with it. But because I'm in a rented house and this isn't even actually my Vive, um, the tower boxes is how I currently have them. Now, to actually set up the Vive, as I said, just plug in the HDMI, USB cable and power cable for the uh, Vive headset itself and then download the HTC Vive software that comes from the website uh, and then also download Steam VR so that you can uh, do the sort of setup. Now it's very simple, if you're doing room scale you basically do stuff like uh, stand in the centre of the room and hold the trigger of the uh, control um, pointing at your screen and then draw the area of where you're going to be as well as put the uh, you know uh, controllers on the floor. If you're doing uh, like standing or sitting uh, scale as opposed to you know full room scale walking around then all you have to do is stand uh, where you're going to be sort of sitting or standing and then tell it how far or how tall it is off the ground. Now as part of the calibration process you get to do this sort of steam training thing uh, which is actually just a really fun thing on its own. It's kind of very simple uh, but basically you can launch balloons from the tips of the controllers uh, like that and then you can also shoot them with lasers as well as a confetti cannon and that sort of thing. So there's, uh, there's a few fun things uh, just even in the setup that uh, it was fun to enjoy. Uh, one of the other cool things um, one of the free things is paint lab so you get to paint either just random things in the air um, or you can paint uh, on for example the uh, w uh, VW camper van and stuff like that as well. Um, that was actually quite fun uh, for my partner as you can see uh, but uh, yeah either way there are a lot of Vive games that you can choose from. I'm going to do a full uh, video speaking about the Vive, the games and all that sort of stuff um, so if you're interested in that do subscribe and uh, check back in a couple weekends time for that. Now in terms of sheer gaming performance with this PC, I know you guys would be interested in it, so here are the scores. Obviously, as you can expect, this is a, just an incredibly beastly machine. One of the most surprising and impressive results was actually Doom on ultra settings at uh, 4K was actually, I think, 70 FPS average, um, which again, I was just really impressed with overall GTA 5 uh, with the settings that I personally use. Uh, I was seeing about 80 to 85 FPS average, uh, which again is just really impressive. In terms in terms of temperatures as well, 
I think I saw the H100 or the uh, 6700K somewhere around si uh, 60 degrees uh, and the graphics card on full tilt after uh, running uh, Unigen Heaven for literally like multiple hours it was still only up at uh, about 70 degrees so yeah it's just a really impressive gaming system and uh, yeah pretty awesome. So as you've seen this is a pretty beastly gaming PC obviously it's kind of what you would expect with a GTX 1080 and a 6700K but uh, I'm really impressed with how this turned out uh, especially the, the video of I've been mostly editing it, so this is just kind of a, a closer piece, but uh, you yeah, know, I, I really hope you did enjoy this type of video, as I said, it's a new style, so um, if you've got any feedback, uh, anything that you could uh, maybe see less of, more of, all that sort of stuff, uh, leave that in the comments down below. Just to let you know, I'm going to be doing a full video on the LG monitor, as well as the HTC Vive, uh, standalone videos on those, just so, uh, especially with the Vive, I can give you more of an idea of the gameplay experience, impressions, um, and what I personally think about the vibe at the current state and all that sort of stuff so I think that's gonna be a little bit better in its own video but hopefully this one was useful for just building a PC in general um, obviously building a high-end PC and um, getting an idea of uh, you know how overclockers and people like that generally handle uh, actually getting your parts and putting them in uh, you know shipping them to you and stuff like that and uh, yeah setting up the HTC Vive and having a little play with it so uh, yeah, as I said, I do really hope you enjoyed it. As I said, please do leave some feedback in the comments down below. Even if it's just, I love this video, it's amazing. Um, that's uh, good enough. Um or no it's terrible but please do let me know why. Um, if you want to pick up any of these parts I'll leave a link to Overclockers and Amazon affiliate links uh, so that you can help me out uh, either way. Um, obviously just uh, let Overclockers know I sent you if you do go with them uh, and that sort of thing but uh, yeah um, feel free to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. I post regularly there. Um, also as I said I've got weekend videos so every Saturday there's going to be a video in the evening um, of uh, you know something new and awesome other the LG monitor, the HTC Vive, um, stuff about the case, all that sort of stuff um, will be coming out over the next few weeks. Um, and if you haven't already seen the uh, table project, the uh, parts video for that went up uh, yesterday, so please do check that out, uh, that one out as well. Uh, and next Friday is going to be the first actual kind of planning and working out how we're going to actually do the table and all that sort of stuff. So uh, yeah, that's going to be awesome as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. As I said, I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next video.